We're in Sebastopol, California with my good friend Mike Cooper. He's going to give us a little tour of his brand new sculpture called Chain Reaction. Take it away, Mike. All right, Ron. Thanks, buddy. So Chain Reaction was a title that Ron came up with as we were driving down to the Grand National Roadster Show back in January. This project was a really long one, and it was actually an idea that Ron had that he abandoned. He was going to have two Harley-Davidson motors on either side of a 27T Roadster. And after a couple of years, he didn't pursue it, and I said, would you mind if I did something with that? And he was happy with that. So I started this with the idea of four motors. And at one of the Grand National Roadster shows, I saw one of these motors, which are a 1910 Harley-Davidson reproduction. It was done by Dave Catalina from Roy Brizio's Speed Shop in the original motorcycle chassis, painted beautifully, detailed beautifully. Anyway, I fell in love with the motor because it has a lower round case. And they look interesting. They don't look goofy like some motors do. So the whole idea of this was to have four motors. These two drive by chain on this side, a shaft that goes across with bearings on either end. These two drive a shaft the other way, and they're linked with a third sprocket that drives to a jack shaft. Then it goes down to a very, very modified Harley clutch and then eventually into a two-speed Cushman transmission. It has go-kart brakes that are beautiful looking. It has a tank that holds compressed nitrogen. Two switches, one for each cylinder, and I'll show you that in a couple of minutes. I'm a sculptor, but I love cars, love hot rods. But I wanted to do something again with a vehicle that was somewhat like a car I made for the first Artist Soapbox Derby in 1975. So this is all laminated oak. And these pieces are comprised of 16th of an inch thick oak. So this piece, which is 3 quarters of an inch thick, is actually 12 pieces of wood. By doing it that way, you can get really radical bends, especially as you can see in places like here and over here. Some of it was done over forms, some of it was done just freely in the air, which you've got to be a little careful with, but that's all true with this kind of stuff. The frame is just mild steel. It's very triangulated. That's one of the loves I have is the look of triangulated structures, but in this case, it's the triangulated structures with the bent lamination. And the color is really important to me, and this was a long time in the coming. Let me show you how the wing works. There's a switch again for the first cylinder, which is now extending. And when that's fully open, then a second switch can be manipulated and it articulates the wing out like this. And then it would hold in that position. So when both wings are extended, it's about 11 feet wide. Totally fantasy sort of uh, thoughts on the wing, but I figure if an idea is worth doing, it's worth overdoing. And uh, just kind of the way I work. This is a better shot maybe of the motors. This is the gas tank, the oil tank, the throttle working, the exhaust. The spark coils are under here. And this is the entrance point for the driver. You sort of slither down in here. There are 50 sprockets and over 40 feet of chain. Some of it's pretty darned exposed and you sort of get your legs through there and so forth. And that's pretty much it. It's got four wheels, the front can't, and those drive wheels are purely aesthetic although the drive would work fine. There's spur gears, so this is a real differential. And in the back, these outer wheels are torsion sprung. I think on this project, the most interesting and creative part was really the mechanical aspect of 
how the engines were going to be on either side of the person, because I wanted it narrow in the cockpit, how they would drive across, how they'd be linked up, and all of that's kind of tucked away. It's a little hard to see unless you really can get up close and so forth. That was really where the great fun started, and then everything is fun. The construction of the chassis, the bent lamination, just takes too long. The most difficult part of this project was getting the motors to run. They had been constructed in Texas. I could get them to fire and run a little bit, but they wouldn't run consistently. Finally, after a lot of fooling around and a little bit of help, I got a good spark. But finally also, I managed to blow a whole head the size of the piston. Part of that head just came off and whisked by my face. And then COVID hit and I decided, let's just get this thing done. Well, Mike, this is such a cool project. Thank you so much for sharing it with our audience. <laughs> Thanks, Ron. It's been a pleasure as usual and yeah. uh, hope we can do something again. All right. Thanks, buddy. All right. Thanks. I love making these videos and I'm honored that you're watching. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified about new videos. I read every comment and I do my best to answer all questions. If you like what I'm doing, please click the Patreon link and become one of the great people who help me create new videos.